Hi there, this is Peter Jenkins. I've been asked to do a short video to demonstrate how uh, star removal with Starnet is accomplished um, and all the processing leading up to the point at which you can remove the stars. Um, I'll quickly show you that in the folder uh, we have the image, the images that were taken of IC1396, the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. There are 20 sulfur, oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, there are 12 60 second RGB frames. So we're going to calibrate those initially. Um, I took flats. Uh, flat exposure lengths were calculated using Sequence Generator Pro and Flat Calibration Wizard. Uh, those are stored with each filter. so. I, I took a set of flats for this. I have darks and bias frames. I take those as a library um, every two or three months and replace them every two or three months. And um, so just continue using them for that length of time. So this is Pix Insight. Uh, these are some of the processes that I have a sort of saved set that I, I commonly use. And we're going to use the script. Um, none of this, by the way, is necessarily the best way to do it. It's just the way I do it. So I demonstrate batch processing, batch pre-processing. Let's add the lights from the folder here. We're just going to add them all by Control A, open. And I just quickly check that the, it has picked up hydrogen alpha, oxygen, sulfur, blue, green and red, which it has. Add the flats, which if you remember are in this folder. So control A, open. Again, I just quickly scroll down, check that it's got them all separated out. It has. Add darks, and this is from the dark library. I have the 60 second and the 300 second, um, which are the, the, the two exposure lengths that we've used. Um, add my bias frames. I've got 30 of them here, which is probably a little bit OTT, so I'll use 20 or so for that. So I'm not using master dark, master bias, master flats. Uh, I do have those from the original run and it would certainly speed things up a great deal if I did use them but I want you to see the process from from start to finish um, Optimized dark frames is unticked for CMOS cameras it's ticked for CCD cameras uh, I'm not going to register or anything I'm, we're only calibrating um, so output directory We'll go into the calibrated. So we've got the output directory. And I'm going to click the diagnostics to check if it, if it seems to think it's got everything. So diagnostics were completed OK. And I'm going to click run. Uh, when I do so, of course, it'll take uh, 15, 20 minutes on my computer. Uh, it's a fairly quick computer, but there are a lot of files here. Uh, this is an i7. Uh, dual core, water cooled. Um, anyway, I'm going to click run and I, then I will pause it once it starts and come back and let you know how long it took. So there we go, run and I'm going to stop, pause the video. Okay, we're done. That uh, usually takes 10 or 15 minutes on my computer, but I think actually it's taken a little longer today. Um, what we now have are a set of calibrated images in here. Um, they've got a C added uh, to indicate they've been calibrated. Okay, um, I can now exit the pre-processing script. Next stage processing is to register um, all the images together. So we're going to pick a, a file from the calibrated images 
and I tend usually to pick one of the hydrogen alpha. I mean, some people go through it and um, actually rate these images and try and pick their best one, or they go through the images and check for any defects that they might want to exclude. Um, in this case, I, I didn't. Um, my guess is the images are all okay. Uh, I'm just going to pick all of the calibrated images here and basically this will align them up uh, with the hydrogen alpha one. All we need is an output directory and here we're going to put a new folder for once they've calibrated they'll be registered so select folder I'm going to run this and again we'll pause a little bit it shouldn't this doesn't take a, anything like as long as the um, pre-processing script but I'll pause nonetheless once I start this okay pausing now okay that only took a few minutes we're back again now so star alignments finished we'll exit that so now we've got to stack the images I used to use cosmetic correction but I stopped using it now but uh, I really didn't find it made a lot of difference so we're going to integrate the images obviously we integrate each set of, it, of images for each filter I'll just make sure that we're picking the registered images I'll put these in alphabetical order so as we've got um, the group together so there we've got the sulfur 2 okay and the pixel rejection I used windsorized sigma clipping with the default values and uh, I'll click on apply this this sh shouldn't take very long although I will pause again just in case uh, the computer is still running a little bit slowly I'll be back in a sec okay that literally was only about 30 seconds or so um, we've got the, the high and um, low rejections we can have a look at those I don't usually bother there is a, a slight speckle on that one um, the rejection low get rid of that so this is the one that we're interested in this is the sulfur and at this stage I rename this S2 and then go ahead and stack the rest so I clear add so let's do the hydrogen alpha next which is the one that we're really interested in for this demo um, so hydrogen alpha open got all now there's actually 18 frames here Again, I'll pause. Okay, this is the hydrogen alpha. I'm going to just close the pixel rejection high and low and hit the screen transfer to see what we've got. Rename this one hydrogen alpha. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll pause this video while I go ahead and do the other set. So there's oxygen red green and blue to do and um, so I'll minimize this one and restart the video once we have that uh, all of them done okay we're back I now have um, stuck together the hydrogen alpha oxygen sulfur red green and blue um, these are they've got temporary stretches applied to them but they're not permanently stretched um, what I need to do at this stage is to uh, crop um, and it's uh, I use the geom geometry dynamic crop uh, w what we're trying to do is find probably the worst one the, uh, they don't all quite line up they were done either side of meridian uh, which accounts for a slight offset um, and the images are dithered as they're taken so uh, this one looks probably about the worst so we'll 
draw where I'm going to crop it and just turn it ever so slightly because it's at a slight angle. I think that'll do. Fine. The other part of the um, mosaic was uh, overlapped considerably with this one, so that to me looks like a reasonable enough crop. Maybe we're just tilted slightly too far. There we go. Um, what I do is I drag the triangle onto the desktop to give me uh, a new process icon, which is this crop effectively. And then I can apply it to the other images. We'll, we'll execute it on this one. Okay, so that's the blue. Um, all I've got to do is drag the process onto this one. So that's green done. Drag the process onto the red. That's the red cropped. And of course, this, the same crop, my same identical crop, is applied to all of these just by dragging the process onto each of them in turn. Okay, so they're now all cropped. I get rid of dynamic crop. I'll keep that process in case I want it. I don't bother renaming it because I know what that usually if there's an odd process sitting there it's geometry crop. Um, as I said these are not stretched, they're not permanently stretched yet so what I do is I drag um, the bar so as we've now got a clone and that way I can keep the originals and work on the, on the clone and I'll do that for each of these images so that we've got a clone of each and I'm in a moment we'll put the red, green and blue together before a stretch which is what I normally do um, and we'll do a permanent stretch to one of them, the hydrogen alpha, I think. And um, you'll see how, I, how far I stretch before I do the next, uh, next procedure. Blue. Right, so now we've got a full set of clones. And I'm going to combine the red, green and blue. And we'll do that now just um, using a channel combination. Pick the red clone. I actually didn't really need to make a clone of these. Green clone and blue clone. Okay, run that and temporary stretch it. It'll be very blue because the channels are linked. Unlink the channels. Uh, we've got something that's quite reasonable. I'm just going to call this RGB stars. And that's this is, in my opinion, is the one, the easy one that I stretch. Um, so we've got on that channel combination. Well, what I've got to do is histogram transformation and uh, zero this, reset it and drag the settings from screen transfer across to that one and then stop the automatic stretch and do a preview as you can see um, the stars are, are there but there is quite a bit of red um, luminosity which I don't really want in the image this is only really for the stars so I actually drag that that way so the background goes fairly black and apply that can close the preview and we've now got a stretched RGB stars image which we'll use at the, at the end of the process. Okay let's look at how far I stretch each of the other images. I'm only going to do one live. I'll do the hydrogen alpha and then I can show you the saved ones. Um, okay so a preview of this um, unstretched reset and live so that we can see what's happening. I, I do a number, I don't do an automatic stretch. Um, I do a number of small stretches and reset it each time in between. This is the way I work. I don't like the automatic effect that you get. I think there's a lot more control if you do it this way. Okay, so let's reset again. So we're getting somewhere close. 
black point can move up a little bit. I can bring this in so I'm not clipping it. Okay. That'll do. It's not not clip. If I reset that you'll see that it's it's fine. Close the preview. That's about as far as I normally go. And I'll uh, pause this video now and do stretch the other two and um, the oxygen and the sulfur and we'll come back when I've got that done. Pause. Okay, we've got um, stretched copies of the hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur. I mean, we can ch I can change the black points later on once I come to the um, Photoshop portion, which is where I go after this. But the next thing that I actually do on the images, I use ACDNR, which is a noise reduction. Um, what I do is I use a lightness mask, preview the lightness mask, and adjust the sliders until I get protection for the high signal areas. That's probably okay. So I'll take the preview for that. I often create by pressing Alt N and a couple of previews so that I can have a look a quick look before I actually run the procedure. You can see this is there's still a fair amount of noise. A preview on that that's certainly going to help. I make sure I've got lightness mask ticked. I'll have a look at the other preview. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the protection. I can now remove the previews and run the process. Um, this doesn't take very long, so I'll just leave the video running. Needless to say, I then follow this by doing the same on the oxygen and sulfur. But the purpose of this video is to really show how we get to the point at which I now use Starnet. We've got an HA clone. Um, and what I these are stretched now and a certain amount of noise reduction has been done on them I actually make another copy and I rename this one HA no stars so I've, I've got my uh, my original one this is going to be no stars because all I do is run Starnet on this. I'm going to run this and we'll, it takes a moment or two, um, usually about three, four minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once it's done. Okay, that took uh, about two to three minutes, I think. Um, and this is the result. So we've now got an HA with no stars. And if I go back one, we've got the other HA with stars. I actually save both of these because sometimes I'll use the one that's marked HA clone, the one on the left here, um, as a luminosity layer. I may sharpen it and use it as a luminosity layer. But the no stars ones are the ones that will go into Photoshop and I'll show you the when I load those three, how I uh, put them together um, and with the stars. Uh, I also save the stars, the RGB stars out as a tith. So these are then saved as 16-bit TIFFs, um, HA no stars, S2 no stars, um, and O3 no stars, and RGB stars, and often this one, the hydrogen alpha clone, has saved as a, 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 the possibility I may want to use it at luminosity. Um, that's really as far as I was asked to go in this video. Um, I think actually I'll... Uh, perhaps do another video which um, shows me opening these three, uh, four images in Photoshop. But I think that's really a separate story and this video is quite long enough already. So it's 20 minutes also. Um, I hope that helps um, how I use um, PixInsight to get it through to the point at which I can remove the stars using Starnet. I've seen a couple of um, examples recently, either the images haven't been stretched or they've been stretched too far um, before applying Starnet. This seems to work fine for me. 
sometimes if there's a very bright star yes there will be a, a little bit of it left which I deal with when I go into Photoshop which I'll show uh, in the separate video okay I, ho I hope that's been helpful um, I'll stop this one for now and sign off this is Peter Jenkins bye for now